You're listening to the Visibly Fit Podcast. Hey, I'm your host, Wendy Pett, and every week I'll give you holistic, practical solutions for everyday issues related to nutrition, healing, functional fitness, and behavior modifications. As a natural path fitness expert and wellness coach for over 20 years, my goal is to empower you to reach for greater health and to rise up to your next level of living in mind, body, and spirit. You were created with greatness in mind. It's time to own it. Are you with me? Then let's dive in. Hello, and welcome to the Visibly Fit Podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Pett. You know, it is important to have great heart health and great lung health. And so this show, this episode is brought to you by the Breather Fit device that I highly recommend. I'm going to demonstrate it now. So if you are watching, it will make sense. If you're listening, bear with me. Here we go. Yes, it's a breathing device that will help with your lung health and breathing capacity. Now, what helps even greater? Um, exercise, aerobics. And that's why this show actually is starting with a breathing device because we have to have a healthy heart. We have to have healthy lungs. And uh, this episode is brought to you again by the Breather Fit. And I have a discount of $12 when you go to the promo code, uh, use the promo code visibly fit, all one word, all in caps, and use the link in the show notes. This device is recommended and prescribed by physicians all across the country. So if you are dealing with compromised, lungs, definitely go and check out this link, get yours today and save money. All right. But uh, again, this is, uh, this show is brought to you by the breather fit device. Um, but this show, I'm so excited. I can't even believe it. Uh, we have the father of aerobics on the show today. That's right. That's right. Do you know who that is? I hope you do. If you don't, it's Dr. Kenneth H. Cooper out of Dallas, Texas. That's right. The Cooper um, Aerobics Center. I know you've heard of it, and I'm so blown away to have him on. He's 92 years uh, young, I'm going to say, but uh, lean in and listen well because he's a fast talker and he's sharp and he has a lot to share. But he um, is a preventative medicine pioneer and, like I mentioned, father of aerobics. He introduced the concept of exercising in pursuit of good health when he launched the worldwide phenomenon aerobics in 1968, his first of 19 books on health and fitness. His latest book, Start Strong, Finish Strong, is a collaboration with his son, Dr. Tyler Cooper. And during Dr. Cooper's 13 years of service in the U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force, he served as a flight surgeon and director of the Aerospace Medical Laboratory in San Antonio, Texas. He dreamed of becoming an astronaut and worked with the National um, Aeronautics Space Administrative Administration to help create the conditioning program, preparing America's astronauts for space and in-flight anti-deconditioning program used to keep astronauts active while on board spacecraft. He also developed the 12 minute and 1.5 mile fitness tests and the aerobics point system. Having coined the term aerob aerobics in 1968, his definition was added to the Oxford English Dictionary in 1986. In 2002, he collaborated with PepsiCo to eliminate trans fats from its Frito-Lay snack. Ooh, yes. Man, one person can make a big difference. Uh, over the past 50 years, Dr. Cooper has proven fitness is a vital sign through research and preventative medicine and wellness services. He remains dedicated, even at 92 years old, to improving the quality and quantity of people's lives. Today, Dr. Cooper is founder and chairman of Cooper Aerobic Center, and that's in Dallas, Texas, the home of six health and wellness companies and a nonprofit research center called the Cooper Institute. At 92 years of age, his current focus, in addition to seeing patients weekly, is working to help reverse the childhood obesity epidemic in schools, Praise the Lord, and preventing preventing uh, pand uh, pandemic uh, situations with 
uh, educating people about increased levels of vitamin D. Dr. Cooper received his Bachelor of Science and Medical Degrees from the University of Oklahoma and a Master of Public Health degree from Harvard School of Public Health. He is board certified in preventative medicine. Again, lean in, listen well. He talks fast, but this is so awesome. Enjoy the show. Well, welcome to the Visibly Fit Podcast, Dr. Kenneth Cooper. What an honor to have you on the show. Thank you, Wendy. It's a pleasure to be with you. The father of aerobics. I mean, pinch me. Am I dreaming? I, I This is like the best interview. I'm so excited. And I know you're going to just bless uh, my audience's socks is off with all of your information and your passion. And uh, you are 92 years young, Dr. Cooper, and you are still going strong. You inspire me already. Thank you. <laughs> well, let's talk, uh, you know, first of all, before we like dive into a, a lot of uh, about what you've been doing, I want to I want to first talk about your faith, because I know that your faith is so important to you. And most of my listening audience is uh, they're a bunch of Jesus lovers. And so I would love to just kind of start out. Let's talk about your faith. Very strong. After my conversion experience at age nine, the Holy Spirit has taken over my life. I'm happy to say that he's still here with me on a daily basis. Yes, I've had some experiences in the past that had to be divine intervention. I wouldn't be here. For example, I, ran at, I was an athlete in high school and college. I won the state championship in the Mile Run, Oklahoma in 1949, made all state in basketball, got a track scholarship to the University of Oklahoma. When I finished my pre-med years, I weighed 168 pounds. But once I got to medical school, I learned that obesity is the most common manifestation of stress. If so, I ate to keep awake at night. I didn't exercise, didn't have time. I've heard that excuse before. So right. I gained from 168 to 204. By the time I was 29 years of age, I weighed 204 pounds. I hadn't exercised regularly in six years. If you have just a typical American male, I made a mistake. I went water skiing again for the first time in many years. I think about halfway through that water skating experience when I got hit with chest pain. My heart was racing out of my chest. I thought, oh, my, I'm having a heart attack, having a heart attack. Get me off the side. Get me off the side. They got me to the side. And by the time I stretched out there, the heart rate came back to normal and the pain disappeared. I went immediately back to the hospital in San Antonio on a complete workup. And they said, Doc, the only thing wrong with you is you're out of shape. Outstanding athlete. This is 29 years of age. Half my medical school class smoked. Half of them didn't exercise. And what happened, that epiphany, since I was diabetic and, and I was hypertensive and pre-diabetic because overweight and inactive, I lost within six months from my first marathon a year later. All those things disappeared. I thought this is a field of medicine and sadly ignored. That is the prevention of disease. I was taught in medical school that preventive medicine is a Cinderella of the medical, especially because there's no profit in health. And so what happened, I got my weight back to normal and I weigh the same thing now I weigh when I graduated from high school. I'm still working 92 years of age, still enjoying life to the fullest. And that's my hope and prayer. The people that are watching this podcast today will do the same thing. Yes, that was one of the epiphanies in my life that I'm here today. When only 22 Amen. of my 102 medical school graduates are still alive. And I'm only one still practicing. Wow. Amazing, great. Dr. Cooper. And I just love that you love the Lord and that he prompted you to go this direction uh, in your field. And so I first of all want to acknowledge the fact that in October, not too long ago of this year, 2023, uh, you and your wife, Millie, right, were awarded uh, the Hall of Fame award from Roaring Lambs uh, from my friend Donna Skill. And so I just want to say congratulations to you both. And how long have you and your wife been married? Hello, if I want now. How long have you and your wife been married? So 64 years. 64 years. That's fantastic. <laughs> People ask me why I talk so rapidly. I say because for 64 years I've been trying to finish this since before my wife does. She does all this silence in conversations. Do I just share the platform with her? If people, if she, if she meets people ahead of me, there's nothing left for me to say. But no, oh, I have a supportive wife. Most men, <laughs> most men don't be married as long as we have. I can guarantee you. And most successful husbands have a, and most successful wives have a supporting husband. And I can say that because I supported Millie and she supported me. That's why we're here today. That's with beautiful. Two kids and five grandkids. That is beautiful. Well, I grew up not too far uh, from you. I grew up in Louisville. I live in Minnesota now, uh, but I grew up not too far from Dallas. And uh, so it's super fun to to speak with a fellow Texan. My son has a boat out there on the lake. Ah, beautiful. My son has a boat out there on Lake Louis, but we know it well. 
<laughs> nice. Well, listen, what really inspired you? I know you already talked about um, your your water skiing uh, event and how you felt like you were having a heart attack, but is that kind of the culprit that inspired you to begin Cooper Aerobic Center? Is that kind I of the... Change my plans for the future. I had planned on when I finished my military career, I had to pay back for being... Uh, be, I was they have to go to, to, to Vietnam for war. They, they a lot back those were very planned. What they did is they would defer us from the draft. What I'm trying to say, and we had to pay back two years. And so at the end of that time, I planned. I was doing my internship up in Seattle, and I got on to Portland, Oregon. I had a race ahead. A, a, a have a specialty in ophthalmology. I hadn't planned on being a specialist for many minutes, but that epiphany changed my whole direction. And all of a sudden, look what happened. So if you'd asked me back in 1960, 1970, we opened up the aerobics center here, built two offices and two employees. What I've been doing at the present time, I'd miss a thousand folk because my vision was finite, but the Lord was infinite. That's why we have a 30-acre facility here with 600 employees, we have 27 full-time positions, 150,000 patients in our database, and we have 74% return and six-month waiting as people trying to come through, I think. We have the largest actually preventive medicine in the country of the world. And people come from all over the world. As I mentioned, I said lunch with a gentleman from, from Russia today. So it's an amazing thing, but God has had his hand on my life. And that's what uh, that's what I mentioned, that that, Billy Graham, that Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son, put that as the title of the book. And I've been writing these articles in Decision Magazine since January 2021. And this is a magazine. I encourage your, your viewers to get this magazine. Very inexpensive. Go Great to magazine. Billy Graham. And you could get a subscription because I'm writing articles every other month. I've been doing this since January 2021. And for example, the last one just came out. It's kind of a surprise. Is more exercise always better? And that's uh-huh. kind of a surprise because how much is enough? How much is too much? So these things I'm trying to get out to the public. Well, let's Go- talk about that right now. How much is too much and how much is not enough? Okay, you have to listen to your body. Now, if you're a highly conditioned athlete running marathons, you can do that as long as you have a conference examination, you follow guidelines, and you listen to your body. Because if you listen to your body, you start having problems like the chest pain or discomfort I had, you're doing something wrong. How much is enough? That's the big thing. So I'm going to talk to people who are doing this, 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 this podcast. Some people yeah, over-exercise, we've show, right? We've been able to show. We published this in 1989, the Journal of the American Medical Association, article title, Physical Fitness All Cause Mortality. Our study showed... And we classify fitness by time on the treadmill. Very poor, poor, fair, good, excellent period. We're able to show if people move up one block on the fitness scale, one block only, that they can increase the life expectancy by six years and reduce just small causes by 58%. On the top wow. category, only nine, but only nine years each cross life levels in and 65%. So the best return your fitness investment from category one to category two. How do you do that? 30 minutes of exercise, collective or sustained, most days per week. That's the answer. That's 150 minutes a week, and 90% of people will move up at least one block if they do that. And we have found in following 100,000 patients who come to our clinic at least 20 times for a period of 45 years, that they're living 10 years longer than the national average. And they're squaring off the curve, living a long, healthy life of falls, and die suddenly. Praise the Lord, if I go that way, I'll be totally happy. My mother and father went that way. Instead of having a drawn out death, because we spend way too much for health, cover, health service dollars on desperate measures that often prolongs death, not life, a miserable few days. $3.2 trillion per year is spent the cost of health care. Twice as much money by else in the world. We rank 40, 30 in longevity. Too much care, too late. That's what we do in this country. So we've found that our people that follow our guidelines, our cost of health care, from 65 to 75 years of age, is 40% less than the average national in America. Then, then why, what, Dr. Cooper? When are averaging 90.4 years in age, our men are averaging 86.5 years of age, and that's 10 years on the national average if we can prove that. Well, with those stats and with this, you know, all, all the quick numbers you're throwing out there, why is it that people are not taking uh, their health seriously and stepping up into this aerobic space? You know, um, what's the misconception about aerobics that, that keep people from doing it? Aerobics, first of all, is a word I invented myself back in 1966 yes. before the book was published in 1968. Aerobics is not aerobic dancing. That's Jane Fonda. Aerobic <laughs> dancing is one of 41 different exercises that qualifies being aerobic. Now, the top one is cross-country skiing because of altitude and cold, the energy expenditure with that. We Number can do two, that here in Minnesota. Number one, cross-country skiing. Number two is swimming. 
Number three is jogging and running. Number four is slide number five is walk. Anyone that's viewing this video, this video clip now can do something of that type. But remember that fitness is a journey, not a destination. That's why you got to keep it up. Expect to get the benefits. Now, I'll be finished today by working out after I go home, before I go home, rather. Now, I work out at home, too, because I walk the dogs when I get home. And everyone should walk a dog whether they have one or not. So that combination that we've recommended over the years has been greatly successful. That's why we have a six-month wait as people come to our clinic and great return rates, I mentioned, from which we publish over six over 700 papers on the scientific literature proving the value of exercise and the practice of medicine. And with this six-month wait, when they come to your clinic, what are they doing exactly, most of them? When they come to the clinic, they have the most comprehensive examination in America. But right behind the Cleveland Clinic, as far as the, the examination we have, and ahead of, John, ahead of Duke Johns Hopkins in the Mayo Clinic, we're number two on that list. But what we do in one day, it takes the others two days to do that, because all we do here is preventive medicine. This is the largest preventive medicine center in the country. And we have this documentary coming out the 17th of December. It's not going to be available until the 17th of November. It won't be available until the first part of the year to the public. But we're going to be doing this because it's impressing people on what we do here. And What's the name of it? To, to, do, to get started in access because we can prove you can live longer, you can better get the cost of health care down, and have reduced all summers emission by 36% in our patients. That's We've huge. That day and no one else has. That's why they're coming to us in droves and trying to duplicate what we're doing. And that's my goal to get physicians to embrace the concept of preventing disease. They said they can't do it because they don't know how to do it. They don't know how anything about exercise. They don't think about diet and nutrition. We weren't taught that in medical school. I didn't learn that in medical school. I learned at Harvard School of Public Health, where I got my doctors. I got medicine. Or nutrition. Or the doctor exercise physiology. So we're trying to educate the physician. So the documentaries I'm making is one is for the general public, and one is for physicians, and next is for medical school. Because in medical school, the only preventive medicine is immunizations. That's all it is. We concentrate on, on getting cooperized, as we call it, everything from proper weight, proper nutrition, proper exercise, avoiding alcohol, controlling the no, no tobacco at all, and then let me get the alcohol intake. And vitamin supplementation is very important. Having the annual examination, that's what's so important. But you don't have these big examinations we have here. We don't accept insurance. We don't take Medicare. Yet we have more people we can handle because people, if they have a, if they, if they can, if we convince they have a need, and you provide a service, get the results they want, they'll make you successful in any field. And that's certainly true here because that's seventy-four percent of our patients come back from return, and forty percent of our patients are corporate sponsored. That's fantastic, and you're right. It is all about preventative, and in medical school, school, that's not something that you're taught, and you're also not taught about nutrition much. It's just, it's just kind of foreign in the medical space. So I'm so glad that you have just been heeding to this call that God has put on your heart. How has the um, the Cooper Aerobic Center evolved since its inception. Started in 1970 here in Dallas with two muffins and two employees in an R8 medical society. I was doing something as dangerous as treadmill stress testing. But I developed that along with my colleague, Bill Thornton, we were both going to be the scientist astronaut when I trust from the Army of the Air Force to go into the astronaut program. And the first thing we had to do was develop a technology we could read an eatable, e readable EKG on exercising subject. It was not possible in the 1960s, 1960s to do that. So that was our requirement for NASA. We did that success. We had a best study to do that. He continued to go on and became a scientist astronaut. But I turned it on after 1970 because it would take a long time to get a flight into space. It took him 17 years to get his first flight into space. If I'd go on that route, become a scientist astronaut, I wouldn't be here today. Another divine intervention in my life. But again, uh, that was something that I was criticized so viciously for when I came to Dallas. They wanted to bore me out of, out of town. They wanted, uh, I had to go before the Board of Censors. They wanted to take my license to the state board here in Texas. But I had to, had to, I had to, exercise, I had to lecture these people on the research we had done in the Air Force. I had over a thousand tremulous stress tests in the Air Force to prove it could be successful and be safe and very important because we've proven that treadmill stress testing has two important things. One is determine your level of fitness. Your level of fitness is the most critical risk factor of all, if I can tell you in a minute. But number two, we can pick up heart disease that you miss with a resting EKG. We find of the 350,000 treadmill stress tests, 16.1% are abnormal equivocal. Only 5% knew they had a problem. That's 11% of 350,000 patients that found they had heart disease here at the clinic. They didn't realize they had a problem. And remember, the most common first symptom of severe heart disease is sudden death. Only right. symptom they have, 40%. Only symptom they have. That can be prevented if people have a stress test and we can pick up disease before it causes any symptoms. 
That's wow. one of the most critical parts of our examination here. We took a people a group of people, average age was 50 years. And we followed them for, for 25 years and got their Medicare date from 65 to 75 years of age. And the only variable we looked at wasn't their blood pressure, what their cholesterol, wasn't their diabetes, what it was, was their time on the treadmill. And we classified in the top 20 percentile versus the bottom 20 percentile. And after this 25 year follow up, we found those top in the top category had 36% less Alzheimer's dementia in the bottom category. They were all healthy, 20% women when they were 50 years of age. They had 40% reduction in chronic kidney disease requiring dialysis, top category versus the bottom category. They had a 25% reduction in cancer of all type, 25% reduction in congestive heart failure. And the big thing, 65 to 75 years of age, the cost of health care was 40% less than that group. We're the first people to prove you could prevent Alzheimer's dementia, and you can reduce the cost of health care. One of my favorite uh, lectures is, is cheap or effective preventive disease that's a fine to cure. I've had to impress that upon a very questionable medical colleagues. And I'm still considered a quack by some people in town, but people come all over the world to see our center. They stay at our hotel. We have a beautiful hotel. We have unique fitness centers in America. We have a 30-acre facility with an outdoor track that's one mile in lake. You have to see what the Lord has able us to develop right here on this campus. Well, I'm grateful. Think quickly how we got this property. Yes. It was another epiphany in my life. Because we, I discovered this property. I, one of the questions you asked, how did you develop this concept and idea? I dreamed of this being what I want exactly. Large place, have all the things I just mentioned, people who run outdoors, indoors, whatever. But I, I, I discovered this property. But she wouldn't sell the property to me. Even the portion of it. I, had, I couldn't buy the whole 22 acres at that time. I only want 8.6 acres. But she wouldn't buy it. She wouldn't break it down because her husband passed a heart attack at age 50 and put this property together. She wouldn't break it down. And finally, she asked my, my relative, she said, just a minute, uh, did he, is he the one who wrote that book about exercise? And he said, yes, uh, he wrote aerobics. And she said, for him, I will do it. Now, what changed her mind? Because another 50. Because several months earlier, I was speaking at this. My wife was speaking at the Labor Leadership Institute in Howard Butt up in Colorado Springs. And she was sitting in the audience. And she was so impressed with what she heard us say. At that time, she decided if I could ever help that young couple, I'm going to do it. You think that's that a would... divine appointment? Now we have this fabulous facility. A divine appointment. That is be very beautiful, Dr. Cooper. Thank you so much for sharing that. And um, I'm curious if, if one, I, mean, I know you have so many stories, but if there's one or two um, just success stories that really stand out in your mind that you could share that have improved their health through Cooper Aerobics. Let me tell you two. Okay. Number good. one, Rick Celeste came to us many years ago weighing 534 pounds. He couldn't get behind the wheel and bar had his car without his we weren't all the past all the his office all the, with the steering wheel rubbing on his clothing, what I'm trying to say. He couldn't even ride it by an airplane. We we put him into a program that I paid for myself. They utilize facilities, have a dietitian. We have 10 dietitians on our staff. And he lost 300 pounds in a period of two years, lost that. And then after that, he joined my son, Tyler, and ran the New York Marathon. And he right. still weighs, he's down to 204 pounds right now. Just saw him the other day. And this has been 15 years since that's happened. That's an important example. Same that's as awesome. Life. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. married. He's married, has five kids now, which he couldn't even get married before. Second is my own wife. Because in 2000, 2015, 2017, brother, she's walking the indoor center here. And she's now eight years, 88 years of age. And she started having some, you, you're listening to audience, video audience are paying attention to it. She started, her arms getting, got getting tired when she was walking around the track, the indoor track with the fitness. And so she called me and said, well, I, this discomfort in my arms disappeared when I stopped exercising. Really get over it. We put it on the treadmill. Always been on it. Put it on the treadmill. It was abnormal on the treadmill. We immediately got over to the hospital, had an angiogram. We did an angiogram here at first, CT angiogram. Got to the hospital, angiogram revealed that she had severe free vessel disease, so much that she couldn't even have an angioplasty stent. Now, this was five years ago now, 2017, well, whatever it is. But uh, I couldn't get the physician. We wanted to do the muscle plus bypass procedure. This was on a Friday until a Sunday. Can I take her home? They said, no, she has a severe disease. She could die at any time. I stayed with the hospital for that 10 days when she had a successful bypass, bypass, bypass procedure performed. Now she's a lot more exercising every day. She's had lunch with her the day. Another epiphany. My own life's wife was saved by coming through this. George Books, I can't elaborate on this, but George, President George Bush's life was saved by coming to the clinic. We packed those six years of bees in his case. Did he got any angioplasty and shit? That was nine years, 10 years ago. He's alive and well now. We have more examples like that. 
So people are coming here, and I've had so many letters from people telling me, going to Cooper Clinic saved my life. And there's this truth. But why do people exercise? Exercise because it may prolong their life. No, people exercise for the fact it makes me feel good. You know, talk to these young people about the importance of aerobic exercise. They can't think ahead that they may be protecting themselves from heart attacks and strokes and cancer, all these various things I mentioned. But if you can tell them, I'm going to feel good, I'm going to feel better. So many people have told me, I wish I'd known how much better I could feel. I thought I felt good in the past. I feel so fantastic, much better now. I can't believe it. And we've proven from our research, people are less depressed, less hypochondriac. They have improved self-image and they less feel anxiety in their life. So just think yes. about that. If I thought I'm feeling good now, you'd be surprised how much better I feel when I go work out at the end of the day. But keep it, remember what I said. One of our famous statements is fitness is a journey, not destination. That's why I tie 92 years of age. I exercise five days a week. Yes, you're 92, Dr. Cooper, and you are just, you're, you're so fast. Like your, your mind, you're just on it. And that is a testament to uh, aerobics as well and just working out. But what, let's talk about your workout. What, what do you do every day for your workout? What is my name? What is your workout routine? Every I'm sorry, day. Like, repeat your, again. Your workout routine. What is your workout what routine? What I do, I've ran for 40 years and 38,000 miles, run the Boston Marathon twice. In fact, back in 1962, I placed the 101st the Boston Marathon. Sounds fantastic. Only 150 people ran it back in those days. <laughs> back in those days, they would ask you, your time was, they'd ask you always, did you finish? But I ran for all those periods of times until 2004, after 52 years of snow skiing up in Colorado. Outstanding snow skier, but I tripped and fell and broke my leg. Tibial plateau fracture. Had to have surgery twice on my knee. And uh, they said, Dr. Kibu, you can't run anymore. So I said, you don't give up. You transition. Because the journey, so I, I transitioned to recumbent cycling now, 30 minutes. So I do that five days a week. I go home and walk the dogs, maybe for 50 to 20 minutes. But I work out, too, by doing my, my musculoskeletal conditioning, too. I spend 30 minutes with a monitor on a bicycle ergometer or a recumbent bike, and I do at least 10 minutes of weight training. Because you get older, you need to have weight training because after age 50, you develop sarcopenia, and that's the loss of muscle mass that occurs after age 50. Now, you can stop that from happening. You can build up new muscle mass after age 50. That's one of the myths of, of aging I have in one of my books. And once you can't build up muscle mass after 50 years of age, there's been studies to prove that. Famous study from Tufts University, they had a group of Older men involved in a kitchen program. And they're doing, they're trying to build up the quadricep muscles. That's the muscle between the knee and the thigh. They're doing leg lifts throughout the day. They did that uh, like over a six week period. And they found they increased the size of the side quadricep muscles by 9%, increased the strength by 30%, and they increased the size of the treadmill by just 15%, even though the average age was 90.4 years. They were younger than I am, 90.4 and building up new muscle. So that's that good that remember, news. Rust out. You don't wear out. That's don't, right. If you want to avoid sickness in the illness, you've got to maintain your health because our people are healthier, they're living longer, and that's the, as I said in my presentation all the time, that's hope, my hope and prayer, as I told you, that, that my this viewing audience will listen and follow those expectations be as happy and healthy as I am at 92 years of age. I love it. I love it. That's really encouraging that, um, yeah, a little bit can go a long way. Just be consistent, right, with that exercise. It's that much. It's just so simple. Right, right. So um, what I teach at Visibly Fit, uh, Dr. Cooper, is a lot of moving isometrics and a lot of isometric style exercises, which I'm sure you're familiar with, of course. So that's what I teach uh, my patients, and that's gone really well. So that's super fun. What are your thoughts about isometrics? Isometrics are good, but they're not cardiovascular. Right, no. Yeah, You'd have to have a cardiovascular base. That's the big thing. Go walking, cycling, running the tough foot, five and yeah. I was just kind of going with the uh, muscle building. It's good, but yeah. it's not quite as good as the isotonic or isotonic when you actually do some muscles to move the joint. But the least you can do, that's certainly isometrics is used, but as an addition to not in place of. That's true calisthenics in general. They're fantastic, but you got to do it in condition, in addition to Absolutely. not in place. You've got Absolutely. to have the aerobic base because you can fit this can be Exercise can be for various things. It can be for muscle building and figure out to It can be for rest and relaxation. It can be for cardiovascular fitness. Only one can prolong your life. You know, all the isometrics, all the muscle tending. And show me the number of weightlifters that have big muscle, how long they live. Right. Yeah, it's got to be a combination. As long as because they're taking steroids is one thing or because of muscle mass. Because you can be over fat just like you can be over muscle. Yeah, that's over so muscle, true. Just like you're over fat. 
Can you share, Dr. Cooper, just some practical tips that our listeners um, who want to incorporate aerobics into their daily routine, but really just don't know how to get started? Like, can you just give some simple practical tips that that someone could just start today and it would be really simple and they could do it? Don't rush into it. Take it slowly. Because if you want to run, you may have to walk before you run. That's why even before taking the 12-minute test, it's been become famous in my first book. I have a six-way starter program before you take the 12-minute test. So you don't hurt yourself by taking a test when you're not really trained, particularly people past 40 years of age. We don't like for people exercise here at the center past four years unless they've had a stress test. And so by doing that, we've had the number of problems we've had almost zero here in the past uh, 53 years. So again, take it slow. And then if you listen to your body, you start having discomfort wherever it may be, in your legs, it may be in your chest, it may be in your arms, whatever it is. You don't want to ignore pain. That's why I got crosswise with Jane Fonda. We exercised to the burn. And I was on national television. I said, I don't recommend people exercise to the burn. That may be burn in their chest. It may be heart, maybe angina. So I'm not sure of that. So anytime that you have abnormal feeling in conjunction with your exercise, just stop and reconsider that. And the significant symptoms, some pain in your chest for exercise, you need to see a doctor right away. So be take it careful. Take it slowly. And you have to, may have to walk before you run. And you have to run before you, you have to jog before you run. But don't think about that you can't do it because regardless of age, you can do it. It's fascinating to know, keep this in mind, it's fascinating to know that you can grow healthier as you grow older, not necessarily the reverse. And we've had dozens and dozens of patients demonstrate that in our 53 years here. That's so good. I love it. Well, what are some challenges that maybe you have faced in promoting aerobics and how have you overcome them? I mean, you've mentioned a couple just uh, even in the state of Texas when you first opened the the clinic. But what are some other challenges that maybe you faced with just getting the word and the uh, the education about aerobics out there? And how did you overcome First of all, let me give you my acronym, T-E-M-M-P-F, why people don't want to exercise. Yes, let's do that one. <laughs> a lot of background there. T, they don't have the time. E, don't have the energy. M, I don't have the motivation. M, I don't have the, the money. And P, I don't have the place. So T-E-M-M-P-F, you know, the excuses I get all the time. A lot of more, a lot of, there's a lot more of them too, but those are ones. But if you have the will, there's the way, so all there is to it. But once you get addicted to it, this is a positive addiction. You feel so guilty when you don't exercise. Are you a regular exerciser? Oh, definitely, yes. Okay, isn't that true? Oh, we yeah. You exercise it the other day because people feel better when they exercise aerobically because the endorphin effect, the body's own morphine, it makes you feel good. And that's true. I know when I broke my leg, I couldn't even do anything for a while. I was on crutches. And I just, I get sad. I see I get people out of the jog. They try to make me want to cry because I couldn't do what I've done for so many years. But when I got back to exercise, even not jogging, but just doing the, the recumbent cycle and the walking, I got, to, got back to feeling good again. But I have so many people told me that it makes me feel good. That's the reason I want to keep exercising. Yeah, that's so good. And that is it. Feeling good, but we also want to feel good and have the energy to do what God's called us to do, right? And to glorify Let me tell you him. a classic example of how important the endorphins can be. Yeah. There was a gentleman who ran the Boston Marathon many years ago. And at the, uh, at the seven-mile at the, at the seven point, he I thought he stepped on a twig or a stick. And he didn't. He slowed down for a while, but the pain was suppressed. And so for the next 17 miles, he averaged about eight minutes a mile, crossed the finish line, and then collapsed. They took him off the hospital, and they found he had fractured his femur. That's a big bone of the lower leg. And, and he, he was still running. He lost the broken leg. How, how can he possibly do the obvious answer of stupidity? No, the, the physician said his endorphin levels are so high, he didn't feel the pain. Amazing. So that's so powerful, the endorphin, the good Lord, bite of that. That's why people in a fire can pick up a, a, a icebox or something and take it out. Pick up a refrigerator they couldn't possibly do because the endorphin effect. We have that's some right. wonderful things we haven't even discovered yet that the Lord provided for us. Amen. That's so that's true. Good. You know, in Genesis, it says our body should last us 120 years. The reason it'll last that long is not because of design deficiency. It's the way we treat our bodies. And no drug can replicate the benefits of an active lifestyle. That's right. My favorite verse is the Bible, too. It's verse Timothy 4 8. For physical fitness, all right. But spiritual fitness is what you need because that prepares not only in this life, but the life in the hereafter. Preach no it, Lord. Dr. Cooper. Yes. <laughs> the wait upon the Lord. They're, they will be, they're, their strength will be renewed. They will mount with wings like eagles. They can fly and they can run and not be weary. Faint. Faint, faint, and I'm not the size of that, as you know. 
That's a so statement good. about all of us should run. We can't fly, but we can run. That's we right. Walk without faith. That's we got beautiful the truth. What have you got in your body as well as your spirit? That's in First Corinthians, as you know. There's so many commandments we have in the Bible. Well, just follow those examples of the Bible and the predictions of 120 years. You might be surprised what happens. I've got mm-hmm. a lot of old patients coming to the clinic. Yes, and, and I know you've got a lot of years left uh, in you. Uh, if it's God's will, I know you do uh, uh, when you've taken care of yourself anyway. So I, I pray that that is true for you. But um, because I know you have a lot more to do in this season of your life. And and speaking of this season, there is a, a, a transition. Your son, Tyler, has been more obviously involved in the, in, in the um, center. So tell me kind of where uh, you expect to see these this new season, these uh, these years, uh, currently, how it's going to unfold, and what do what do you what do you see? What are these new steps in the season for for the Cooper Center? First, my son Tyler is also a trade like I am. He's born in Brooklyn, but also spent. He spent a year at Harvard. He's a master's public health, Harvard School of Public Health. I've spent two years working with our exercise physiology. Second year, done a wonderful job. He's now the president, CEO of the operation. So the organization is in good hands. We have some major renovation projects and reconstruction projects here and there. We have more people we can handle, as I can say, even though we don't accept insurance, we don't accept Medicare. Why? Because if we did, we'd be controlled by the government. But so we're setting by our own here and don't accept insurance or Medicare. We can take the data we get all of our patients for their permission and put their data on our research institute. That's where we all these publications from. So that's enabled us to, that's another epiphany in our life. Let me tell you one final epiphany because you probably won't believe this. The Lord has been taking care of me from day one. So all there is to it. So one of the most uh, dramatic experiences of my life occurred in 1989. My son, along with two other fathers and sons, we went to, to Africa to climb Kilimanjaro. Went across the border from Kenya into, into, into Tanzania. They wouldn't let me across because I had a stamp in my passport from South Africa. That was back in apartheid. Can't get across. So the guy came back a few minutes. Maybe I can help you. So he came back and he said, what's going to cost me? $35. So... I can handle that. That evening, we got a briefing about worrying about climbing a Kilimanjaro. It's 19,300 feet high, about uh, having a type of ripple edema, having a ripple edema, and all these various things. And I thought, Tyler, I, I lost some red cells taking all these chamber flights when I was in the Air Force. I'm not quite sure I should go up there. Kind of changed my mind about doing that. And I said, either we train in Kenya for, for about seven days at 10,000 feet, I better not go. So I let them leave the next day, and I left on my own. I had to work my way back. Nobody else went back. You won't believe this. I got back. I was sweating blood by the time I got back to the border of Kenya, Tanzania. Because I was going through because going through the customs there. And they were finding out that I've legally I'm in Tanzania. They may have put me in jail. And no one to talk to. They translate no one to translate for me. And this is, I remember this like yesterday. I was standing in line, one person in front of me. And this beautiful white woman, all dressed in white, came up beside me and said, Dr. Cooper, I've been waiting for you. Give me your passport. So I gave her my passport, walked up. She opened up in front of the agent and said, stab it, with a hard voice. Then he stepped it close back up. She gave it back to me. And I turned to look. He gave it back to me. Turned to look at no one around. An angel. I could see that lady. No one. I could speak. Did anyone see her? Only the agent and I saw her. In my dying days, the Lord provided an angel for me. Oh, that's she beautiful. One of these days in heaven, I get a chance to meet her. Oh, I love that story. It's my life. The strange thing, too, I don't have any remembers, remembers at all. I remember exactly coming from the hotel at the base of Kilimanjaro at the border there. I remember every detail of that. But going from there to go to the airport to get back to that, I don't remember a thing about that. I was so relaxed knowing the Lord had helped me that the Holy Spirit just took over. I don't remember a thing about that. That's all in the book, by the way. My 20th book is coming out sometime probably early 2024. Wonderful. And, and what is the name of that book? We're in the book. And the title of the book is probably the, uh, the, doc, the, the, the Father of Aerobics and the Impact It's Had on the World. And that'll be basically, that's what I've tried to be using the present time. It's the story of my life. And that along with the four documentaries we have now, we're going to change the way medicine is practiced in the world. Amen. I think again, we've already proven that without question. And that's my dying goal, that physicians of the world will change an attitude towards too much care too late to try to help prevent disease, prolong lives, and put the quality of life all square off the curve. Praise the Lord, if that's the way I go. Amen. Drop the mic. Like that was a, a final word. That was so good, Dr. Cooper. <laughs> 
thank you for sharing your time with us. Thank you for sharing your your passion, your knowledge, your faith. And uh, I'm just so honored to have this time with you. So God bless you and your continued endeavors in this space. And I'm just grateful for all the way that you've paved the way for physicians and others to be healthy and well. God bless you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. And I hope you leaned in and listened well, right? I was not joking. Dr. Cooper talks fast. (laughs) And so I do. I hope you uh, enjoyed the interview. I hope you heard his wisdom and, and grabbed a few of those nuggets of truths that you can apply to your own life and your, your health and your well-being so that you can live longer with a better quality of life by just taking action, simple action, and uh, taking good care of your heart and your lungs and, and your body uh, all the way through, through and through, right? So yeah, the father of aerobics was on Visibly Fit. How exciting is that? And back in, gosh, it's been a while, but episode 46, I had the godfather of fitness's wife on. So that's Jack LaLanne. I had his wife, Elaine, 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 Elaine LaLanne, say that five times fast, but I had her on at age 97. And so it's so encouraging and inspiring to hear people like Dr. Cooper and Elaine LaLanne and uh, just see how healthy and well they are and how sharp minded they are. So hopefully it encourages you. And if you are in a position where you're like, you know what, I just feel like I'm too far gone. Uh, It's too late for me. I just want you to know that that's a lie. It is never too late for you to get healthy and to take steps for your better uh, well-being. And go and check out cooperaerobics.com and get to Dallas. Go and see what he can do for you at the clinic. Um, I know that he's got tons and tons and tons of, of testimonial stories. So if you're ready to take action, again, to go to cooperaerobics.com and check out uh, the clinic and just get there. Maybe you're in a place where you feel healthy and well, but you want to take some preventative measures, check it out, cooperaerobics.com. And if you've been following me long enough and you are ready to take action with me and Visibly Fit, you know I've got the Visibly Fit 7-Week Accelerator course and would love to walk you through that. Um, it's, It's nutrition, it's exercise, it's mind, body, spirit, emotions, all the above for the holistic approach of of healthy living. And you can go to getvisiblyfit.com and sign up right away today or go to wendypet.com and let's have a conversation and get things going for you. I'm passionate about your health. Dr. Cooper is passionate about your health. Let's get you taking action, all right? All right, God bless. Share this episode with somebody that you know that will be encouraged and inspired. Again, I just, I'm so excited to have had him on. And oh, and check out his docu-series. Um, I will put a link in the show notes as well, but I know that will inspire you uh, uh, in addition to this interview. So God bless and thank you again for tuning in. And we will catch you same time, same place right here on Visibly Fit next week. Take care. Well, that's a wrap for today's show. So thank you so much for tuning in. I love spending this time with you. To learn more and get more free resources, just head on over to wendypet.com. And thank you in advance for sharing this episode and this podcast, following and subscribing not only to this podcast, but finding me on social media, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are, I'm probably there too. Until next week in our next podcast time together, make it a visibly fit day.